Well, we're here. Oh, yeah, Clint. Here we are with Dean Turner. Dean's got a gift to entertain. He's been doing stand-up comedy for a long time. Dean, so glad that you're here with Yay! us. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, it's, it's fun. We've had, we've had two different days of performing mm -hmm. art ministry with us. So that's good. That's mm -hmm. good. Right. Well, I promise people uh, that they're going to smile and laugh today. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to do some voices for us. Uh, who's your favorite voice to do? Well, my favorite voice is uh, Jimmy Stewart. I always love doing Jimmy Stewart all the time. Every, I, 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 Jim, 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 Jim Stewart. I, I have like a, 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 a G, GPS, you know. Uh, <laughs> do you imagine Jimmy Stewart doing a Jeep? You're trying to get to uh, you, you, you go you down to uh, you go down 48 and you. You make no, no. You don't make a left. You make a right. You, <laughs> you, you, you end up in the in the river if you don't watch where you're going. You know. <laughs> well, <laughs> Jimmy Stewart, one of my mom and dad's. He was from Pennsylvania, rather. Yeah, yeah. Indiana, yeah. PA. Indiana, yeah, yeah. yeah. His mom and dad had a hardware store. For my mom. Yeah. If yeah. my mom and dad's stories are are uh, are accurate about Jimmy Stewart, what very about, down home, down to earth. What about uh, what about somebody like Sean Connery? Oh, Sean Connery. Yeah, Sean Connery, he's, ever since he started, he stopped doing the James Bond, the Bond movies where he's talking more like this. He started getting real old in his voice and getting the Scottish coming in and everything that he does. <laughs> you hear him doing everything, brushes his teeth, I'm Sean Connery brushing my teeth. Yes, you bring me this. I, I, uh, this is an interview program. One of the guys I watched a lot growing up was Larry King. Do you do any Larry King? Uh, yes, yes. Larry King is one of my favorites. As a matter of fact, I do corporate shows and I do uh, corporate presentations for various companies uh, with the uh, using Larry King as the format. Oh, you do? Uh, yeah. Larry King's great because he's always, Topeka, Kansas! You know, he's always telling people, you know, and he has the celebrities on all the time. And I did a, I did a video years ago for Federated Investors where I had Jack Nicholson, Sean Connery, Columbo, Clouseau, everybody, even Frank Sinatra, oh, yeah? making these, uh, breaking in via satellite. You know, oh, he's always having people. So cool. doesn't have a lot of people in the audience all the time, you know, but he has uh, people coming in through via satellite. Now, so he has a lot of time. You said Columbo. Yes. That was one of my mom's favorite shows. Oh, that at Columbo. Yeah, yeah. yeah those yeah, shoes, I'll tell you something, Doc. Those <laughs> shoes, those shoes. Where did you get those shoes? <laughs> you think I could buy a pair of shoes like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, did, how did you get into this? I, know. I just started doing this, just doing voice. When I was in high school, I would do sound effects and uh, I'd do like <laughs> heartbeat sounds and <laughs> kid around and kind of drive the teachers crazy. Then one day I just started doing voices, and Jimmy Stewart was my first voice. Oh. Yeah, because he was so well liked and everything, and he's been around through the 30s, 40s, 50s. And I started doing him, and then I started doing uh, Ed Sullivan was the big one. You know, oh, that's yeah. the biggie because you could introduce any act. Right here in our show, we have fine, fine. <laughs> let's let's bring out the, uh, the the bear and every. He always had all the all the animal acts. Tupu, <laughs> Robert Collette. Let's bring out Robert Collette here. And uh, I started doing uh, them. And then I, what really stood out was doing people like Pat Robertson. Oh, dude. And, oh, and, wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's because, on the air. Let's see how you do him. Yeah, because he, he always sounds like he's, he, he could do the news and say, uh, there was this, this robbery, and, and there were all kinds of shooting going on, and every, he always acts like he's laughing when he's I just know, talking yeah, seriously. So uh, yeah. you, you know, and uh, you got to, I, I don't know, you got to do, do, you know, like this and that, and, and his voice stands out. Yeah, he does. That's, that's what you want to do. You want to do people that stand out, and uh, like Charlton Heston was all, I was vision. Charlton Heston uh, in Burger King ordering or something. <laughs> oh my, oh Lord, I'm so hungry. Oh, my throat is parched. I'm so thirsty. I want a big burger <coughs> dripping with mayonnaise and lettuce and cheese. It's God is my witness. <laughs>
Oh, man. <laughs> you don't get to see things like no, that. No, you don't you know. get to see that. Yeah. <laughs> get to see that. Well, I, I know that you do some, uh, some some voices like some political guys. I was wondering about Bill Clinton. Have you ever done a Bill Clinton? Oh, Bill Clinton, I'll tell you something. You know, he's still there today. Every time you see Hillary, Bill's there, you know. Yeah. But he, 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 he's somewhere in the background or anywhere, you know. <laughs> but he's there. <laughs> So here's a young man. You kind of discover that you can do this stuff, make it fun for yeah. other people. Yeah. How do you turn it into doing it professionally? Well, what you have to do is when you're when I was doing stand up comedy over the years, you have your audience in front of you. And what you have to do with it, a lot of comics say to me, boy, I wish I could do impersonations because comics do all topical humor. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it's a lot easier, you know, just to do the impersonation. So basically, I create little scenarios like I did with the Jimmy Stewart with the GPS or Charlton Heston and Burger King. You create scenarios where you would never see these people, right. but you just you just do it, you know, like Walter Cronkite, you know, or uh, you know, he could be a weatherman or anything, or Richard Nixon, Richard Nixon, he'll never die away. That'll always be there. And you put them in different scenarios. I used to have William F. Buckley interviewing Curly of the Stooges years ago, just to check. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I'm William F. Buckley uh, Jr. Uh, I have a question of socioeconomical uh, uh, structure that I would like to ask you. <laughs> oh, sweet! <laughs> you know, that's the the beauty of the thing. You know, you putting, can create your own world. Yeah, take Seems like Jack you Nicholson and put him on uh, Captain Kangaroo. Hey, Captain! Hey, whoa! <laughs> hey, I'm here to have a good time, Captain. You know, seems like you create your own world a that's lot. What you do. That's, that's what you do, and that's what gets people. You know, if you just come on and just do them as a regular as, as they are, you know, but yeah. you put them in. Kind of crazy situations. I don't know if you watch the Academy Awards. Uh, oh, Terry, all the time. Terry and I watch this, and I was really disappointed in this last Academy Awards in that uh, one of my favorite actors did not get the uh, supporting actors award. That's Sylvester Sylvester uh, Stallone. You know, I, I was I, I was surprised too. You know, hey, you know, I feel I was. I don't get no lock and make. I feel they give me the supporting Oscar, you know, all that stuff. Like. <laughs> yeah, hey, Adrian, yo, hey. Um, well, when you were when you were out in Hollywood, one of the things that, as, how did you come into your relationship with Jesus? I was uh, just doing a show one after I did a show one night. I got back. The comics get back real late at night, so I got back like two or three in the morning. And I conked out and went to sleep because I was so exhausted. And all of a sudden, I heard this moaning sound coming from my daughter's room. And we, my wife and I ran right inside, and my, we had to rush our daughter to the hospital. And it turned out that she had a 20-minute grand mal seizure, which causes a lot of brain damage. And it really affected her. And over the past couple months, it led to her having uh, discovered she had cerebral palsy. And I would go on stage, and, and I would use the stage to just as an excuse to be able to get away from the pain of it all, which a lot of comics do to this day. And as events started turning out, we started getting help with my daughter. And God sent people. This is before I was a Christian. Uh, my wife had become a Christian uh, about eight months before I did. And the people that God sent to help with my daughter's situation all happened to be Christians. And they would pray with my wife, and uh, they would have, um, they'd form Bible studies and all this stuff. And I would come home, and I would go ballistic. I, I just didn't want to have anything to do with this. I was involved in show business, uh, and I didn't want to hear this. And slowly, the Lord got the, uh, tugged at my heart. And uh, one day, I went out to this center where my daughter was staying, McGuire Center in New Brighton. And we went out to visit her one day. And uh, they said, Mr. and Mrs. Turner, can you wait till we bring your daughter down? And I thought, what's going on here? Is she sick or ill or something happened? And all of a sudden, I saw my daughter with cerebral palsy walking down the hallway uh, for the first time, an absolute miracle. And the power of God just went over me. And I just went, I said, oh, my God, I've been hearing so much about what you do. I said, Lord, you have my life. And I gave my life to him right, right oh, at the wow. spot. And then people came in and started discipling me. A lot of friends and people started helping me. It wasn't enough just to accept the Lord. I had to be discipled to know all, more about him 
than ever before. You so mine know. wasn't just coming to a church and being, you know, uh, where I hear the, the, the pastor really get some good mm -hmm. points across and I raise my hand. No, I had a, mine was a real tug. It was a tragedy mm -hmm. that brought both my wife and myself to the Lord. I'm so glad that you mm -hmm. came, Dean, and shared your gifts and your story. I'm oh, so glad you. you're able to tell that story because I know there are people watching that are going through right. adversity in life. Right, I mean, right. you're going through something like that. Dean didn't know it was coming. It came all of a sudden. Yeah. It came in the night, you know, and it was, it was, an, it was an attack and God used that to change lives.